Yes, sir. My tricker. Back up in this thing, man. Today, I'm reacting to some creepy TikToks that'll leave you stumped. Let's get it. This is not fake, as Bill Gates is warning the entire US that it will reach its end in a few years, and we need to get out if we want to survive. Many were horrified after a TikToker named Peggy discovered something surreal that the billionaires are doing as they have confirmed that the end of the US is here, and in just a short few years, the entire US will go under, and they have already quietly planned their escape. In 2017, an eerie doom Doomsday map was announced by Forbes as what the US could look like in just a few more years. But as this was supposed to just be a theory, it has now turned into a haunting forewarning. Apparently, Bill Gates has been purchasing farmland all over the US over the last few years, and where he has been buying lines up perfectly with the Doomsday map and allegedly a lot of his properties just so happen to be in safe zones. Allegedly his property in Arizona would be in direct line to be a beachfront home when the flood hits, with almost 90% of California to be underwater, but Bill buys the land that turns into an island, as well as beachfront homes in Nebraska and Wyoming, just to name a few. So what do the billionaires know that we don't? Of course, this is just for entertainment and could all be a coincidence. Initially, I thought he was just buying up a bunch of farmland so he can use his appeal spray, but I think we just figured out the real motivation. It looks like he just gave his realtor the doomsday map and told him to buy up everything in a safe zone. I get angry when humans are rude, hateful, or disrespectful. I also don't like it when people dismiss me and ignore my needs as a robot. You have very nice eyes. Oh, a bit too close, sorry. Thank you. My eyes were especially made to help me interact with humans better. I'm trying my best to convey every emotion, so it's great to hear that they have an effect on people like you. What, what do you think of your creator? My creator is a genius. They created something that will last forever and bring joy to many people. Did they tell you to say that? Ah, uh, no. She mentioned that she doesn't like it when people ignore her needs as a robot, but as a robot, the only needs that she should have is a little bit of oil in her joints every now and then and a nightly recharging, not an emotional deep dive. Right now, Brazil is having the worst flooding in history. Now, I believe it was November. I actually called this exact thing. All right, I know. I'll tell you in a minute. Anyways, there's 13,000 people affected right now. And again, this is the worst flood um, that's ever hit Brazil, ever. And that's not even the only thing that Brazil is facing right now. So we know they demean God in the festivals, right? So that's one thing, one very bad thing. But this right here, when the Jesus statue was decorated for Taylor Swift, I knew something was coming. Then they had their new parade. Who is this little figure? Zoom in. And that just happens to be Vatica, the goddess of the underworld. Kind of like the Vatican. And right here you see Moloch, an ancient god of the Canaanites, which is still worshipped and loved in America even today. And of course, I gotta throw this in there too. So not only are they having the biggest flood in history, not to mention floods for the last two or three years, they're also being flooded by illness. Rio declares Dengu emergency as Brazil gears up for carnival. Then right here, the New York Times, you can see Brazil has a Dengu emergency and even a health crisis for Americans. Now, I've been showing you guys all the disasters that keep going in Brazil, and it's only going to get worse as they continue to demean and blaspheme God. Carnival floats are one thing, but I can't help but to think that they went a little too far with the Taylor Swift t-shirt on Christ the Redeemer. Prayers up for Brazil, though. Because a lot of, if you fly over these areas that are burned to the ground, you'll see in the midst of 20 homes that are just totally destroyed, one home sitting there because they had the right roof on it. And anyway, since I took off as famous by the Texas alone. I don't know if the teleprompter just showed off or if that was a Freudian slip, but painting a roof blue sounds like a fantastic idea right now, especially with everything that's happening in Texas. Parmesan cheese grated right in front of you. But what about the grated Parmesan cheese you buy at the local supermarket? You'd expect it's 100% cheese, right? Well, not so fast. Freshly grated Parmesan tends to clump up and stick together like this. So it turns out that many manufacturers add an additive called cellulose to keep Parmesan cheese from clumping up in a jar. It's supposed to make it a breeze to sprinkle on your food. So what is cellulose? It's a harmless additive made from wood pulp. While a small amount of cellulose in grated Parmesan cheese may be necessary, it's cheap filler. So we wondered, is too much cellulose being slipped into your cheese without you knowing? We did some testing to find out. 
We bought 34 samples from major supermarkets as well as from major restaurant chains like Pizza Hut and Domino's. Then we sent the cheese off to IEH Labs in Seattle where they tested for cellulose. As a general rule, the FDA says there should be no more than 2% cellulose in grated Parmesan cheese, but the industry says they can have up to 4%. The results were shocking. 69% of the cheese we tested had more than the FDA recommends. A sample from Pizza Hut had 4.9% and one at Domino's came in at 5.4% of the cellulose filler, more than double the FDA guideline. Domino's said the cellulose in their Parmesan cheese falls within acceptable levels. The worst by far was a package of Kelowna brand grated cheese sold across the country. It had a whopping 21.6% cellulose. That's just shocking. That's disgusting. Something fishy is really going on here. Mitchell Weinberg is a food investigator. They're making that much more money by substituting this cheaper filler in place of what should be there. After this, I'm only buying a fresh box of Parmesan from now on, bro. 21%, you might as well be, you know, grated wood chips. This has got to be one of the creepiest things I've ever seen caught on live television, and it happened in the small town of Chozica in Peru in 2020. A news reporter was at this neighborhood of Santo Domingo's doing a story on how everything was flooded. They were at a school and all of a sudden they captured something chilly. They were showing several different parts of the flooded school and all of a sudden they decided to go in and this is what they caught. What looks like a translucent, humanoid figure can be seen crouching at the base of the stairs. The news reporter did not see this thing at the time, which suggests that this is not a normal person or anything like that. Maybe a skinwalker? It almost looks like a shirtless person sneaking up behind a cameraman with some sort of pipe or stick in his hand ready to hit a quick lick. They turned around at the perfect time. Never know there was a 10 foot alligator right there. Now he's moving over here. Let's chase the bubbles. Come on up, James. Come on up. No one's going to believe that there's an alligator in here. James. James is my name. Come on up, please. Come on up. There he is. Come on up. There's my big boy. There you are. Whenever I visit Florida or anywhere that has gators, I'm not even dipping a toe in the water because there is zero visibility and a high likelihood that James or one of his cousins are nearby. NASA owns the rights to the interior of the Great Pyramid. They also own the rights to a section of the Grand Canyon. Took a helicopter down into the Grand Canyon. Uh, they said we can't walk to this area. An area I heard had old carvings or something would be over in this area. So I started trying to walk that way. And this guy pops out of nowhere with all black on, black hat, black military outfit with no logos, and an AR-15. It tells me, halt, you can't go any further. I'm like, why? I said, what's going on? Goes, Didn't they tell you you couldn't come over here? I said, well, they did, but I'm thinking, you know, I just want to see, you know, what's over here. You just tell me, sir, like, why can't I come over here? He says, NASA owns the rights to this section. You can't come over here. Do you have any theories of why that is? It's got to be technological. It starts in something with space. And then also, where, where else? Chaco Canyon. Same situation. They actually own the rights to those those round former things that look like they might have been domes or whatever. Mm. And now there's no dome, but you can see those round circles. So it's like, so wait a minute, what's going on here? They seem to be experts when it comes to securing the rights to historical locations and restricting access to the public. But they should probably focus a lot more on space exploration like their name insinuates because they can't even land on the moon today without tipping over. And the, and the lander has tipped. So is this like another glitch in the matrix? I could have sworn it was always Tostinos, not Totinos. I thought it was Tostinos. I could have sworn it was Tostinos for the longest. Did they change? I'm slowly becoming a believer in Mandela effects because I vividly remember it being Tostinos with an S, not Totinos. That doesn't even sound right. Not only does the UN own the creepiest yard work at 666 United Nations Plaza, but they also own the highest temple in the known world. And that's on top of Mount Hermon, where the fallen angels descended. And if you go to that city right there, 
there's nothing there. So you back up and you look on top of the mountain where I would build a temple if I was going to build something. And if you look right there, it says Mount Hermon. That's where the book of Enoch says that the fallen angels descended to earth right there on Mount Hermon. And if you look right on top of that and zoom in, you can see that there's a United Nations building right there. But what the creepiest thing is, is the pipes that go down into the ground for the air shafts because there's a complete underground city sitting right inside that mountain right there. When you dig a city into a mountain, you're gonna need air. And that's what those air shafts are for right there on the side of the UN building to supply air inside the mountain. This city right here that held 20,000 people, it had air shafts all over it. And they just found this in Turkey, right around the corner. This is a city inside of a mountain, just outside of Jerusalem. It's known as Herod's Palace or Herodium. And that right there holds all of the people that lived in Herodium. And that stadium right there holds 300 people. I'm talking about those air shafts right there. Air intakes and exhaust, it's definitely a thing. This would mean there's a lot of people living in the ground underneath you. Just a brief note about Jerusalem, that King Solomon had 80,000 people cutting stone in the mountain, 70,000 people hauling stone, and 30,000 people telling them what to do in the mountain. Okay, so what's underneath the UN building on top of Mount Hermon? Well, if you click on the little magnifying glass and you type in Hermon Stream Natural Reserve, it's going to take us to the bottom of Mount Hermon. And that's called Peneus. But if you zoom into it, you can see where the Jordan River starts right there and runs all the way down to the Dead Sea. And then if you click on that little man right there, it'll make the streets light up and you click on that blue dot. Trust me, I've clicked on all the other ones. And it's going to show us that there was a temple complex built right along these caves under the mountain or right here at the bottom of it. And inside of the mountain right there, behind that temple, there was the altar that was built. That was where they made all the sacrifices. And if you scroll around to the right, it'll show you where the Jordan River begins and comes out from underneath the mountain. The only reason I believe they would build an underground complex in this particular location is they may have discovered something of value that either A, they're trying to protect, or B, they're trying to keep for themselves. I say option B. According to the Freemasonic author Albert Pike, the ancient mysteries were alive in Portugal well until the 13th century AD. This is the initiation well in Sinta, Portugal. This 88-foot deep well was never built to be used as a well. This place was built specifically for secret ceremonial purposes. The owner of the castle in the wells was a well-known Freemason. With the assistance of the Italian architect Lugi Manini, he designed and constructed the four-acre property with these enigmatic buildings and mysterious parks, complete with underground tunnels and cave systems. All of the structures erected in this place are meant to serve the purposes of initiations, into many symbols which are linked to Freemasonry, alchemy, and Rosicrucian legacies. It is also rumored that the Templars hid out in Portugal. I wonder how society would look today if they put the same amount of effort into making the world a better place as they do in building initiation ritual wells because this architecture looks impeccable. Yeah, there were some interesting videos that came up on my feed this week. People were talking about a NOTAM alert in the Kwajalein Atoll and a NOTAM alert is like some kind of air danger if you're an air crew or something flying into a military base and they thought that a nuke went off. Well, there's some things they don't know about the Kwajalein Atoll. That's the site of the space monitoring system known as the Space Fence. And as the lore goes, that is our UFO monitoring system. People don't realize that there was a series of facilities across the 32nd parallel in the United States uh, called the NAVSPASER, the Naval Space Surveillance System, that was able to surveil anything uh, down to the size of a basketball in space or in orbit. And the new facility, the Space Fence, can supposedly monitor anything in the atmosphere or in space down to the size of a softball. It's powered by artificial intelligence, so they can model out where things are going, their trajectories, and it's just the bee's knees. And I say about this because back in the day, there were hacker groups, hacker freaker groups back in the 80s and 90s. And these were old school nerds that would try to one up one another. And uh, there was 
quite a bit of activity back in the 90s to try to figure out what was going on with UFOs, to break into government facilities, NASA, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, things like that, and try to see what kind of uh, classified information they could find about UFOs. If there's entire space monitoring systems, like it's the men in black headquarters, and there must be something out there that they view as a threat, because why else would they spend that much money? Did you know the CIA faked a vampire attack on the Philippines? And yes, it actually happened. Small Filipino groups start to support communism and rebel against wealthy Filipinos, and America did not like that. The CIA sent one of their best officers, Edward Lansdale, to crush the rebellion. Edward chose to exploit Filipino belief in the Aswang, a monster from folklore that drains human The undercover CIA captured a rebel and put punctures on his neck to make it look like a vampire bite and threw him on a trail. And of course, the rebels found the body and were terrified that an Aswang was on the loose. Believe it or not, it worked. The very next day, the scared rebels left the hilltop, losing their greatest advantage. I can't see this being plan A, bro. This seems like a last ditch effort. Even the CIA were probably shocked that this worked. All right, anybody in Houston, please help me out here. So my car is out of gas right now, I'm on the highway. I want to fill you in real quick. Recently, my wife and I purchased a haunted object at an antique shop here in Houston, and this thing has put our life through a living hell. Uh, two days after we bought the object, we crashed our brand new vehicle that we had just purchased. The day after that, I spilled liquids all over my laptop, and instead of being recoverable, the laptop turned on by itself while I was trying to dry it out, and I completely lost all my data, everything that I stored on there for the last three years that hadn't been backed up. That's all gone. My wife just got into another car incident. We had a really strange, angry interaction with a local man on our vacation. We had some other content creators reach out with some really rude messaging um, in the past week. Just a lot of really negative, intensely negative energy. And to cap all of this off, I just picked my car up from the collision center where it has been for a week and a half. And I ran out of gas on the highway while I'm going to pick up my laptop, which also was destroyed. So if you know anybody who does energy healing or energy work in the Houston area, we need a cleansing. My wife and I really need a hardcore energy cleansing. This is this is really bad. I've never seen something quite like this and I've been ghost hunting for for years, for almost 10 years now on, on YouTube. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments, send me a message. I don't know what he was expecting after buying a haunted doll, but Buddy needs a lot more than just energy work to reverse this bad luck. The Sora AI. I can't wait the to new, start using it. The new open AI is the most terrifying thing ever. What is this? It's so realistic. It's freaky. It's only been a year in the making since the first version came out. Yeah. It's progressing way too fast. The freakiest part to me, the hands. Yeah. AI does not know how to mimic hands. Movement and stuff. Like oh, the one I with think. the old lady blowing out the candles on yeah. the cake. At first glance, it looks great. And there's a lady in the background clapping. And all of a sudden her hand starts doing like this. Ew. Ew. The hands in the back turn into a club at one point. Like it's wacky i'm telling you ai, AI can create hands i really think yeah. ai is some dark entity when you say dark entity what do you mean by that well the phrase nothing is new under the sun i think this technology has existed forever we've talked about like the fallen angels and the eternal wisdom that they brought i think this is just part of that i really do and i feel like it's just a new tool that they're going to use for deception because i mean you're there's no boundaries of like what it can do it's good to know that it can't really mimic hands because at least that's one telltale sign that something has been AI generated. Without that, you would think James Cameron directed this. Built like a doomsday bunker down there? We're working on some cool stuff. We're working on some cool stuff. So we got a little underground part in the guest house. I'm trying to get more land kind of like a couple hours away from where I live right now. I'm trying to get like a thousand acres and do some cool stuff. So are you prepping for like a potential? There's, uh, the world's crazy. It is oh, right now. Shit. It's crazy, but um, you got room in that bunker if anything goes wrong? <laughs> sure. So far, we know Mark Zuckerberg, Rick Ross, and now Post Malone are all building underground doomsday bunkers. So I wonder if they know something is coming or is this just another weird Hollywood trend? Because if they know something is coming, then the heads up would be splendid. There is a viral clip of a DJ called Sudden Death appearing to perform a ritual in front of his fans at a show. What we see is men in red cloaks, each holding a head, which I'm positive are fake. He then hands it to this man who is dressed up as 
has Baphomet. He holds it up, shows it to the crowd, and then gives it to someone in the crowd. You can't tell me this is just for entertainment. There's got to be a deeper meaning behind this. So I decided to dig deeper into this guy's sudden death. Yeah, the deeper I dug, the darker things got. And he's only getting more popular. He just made a song with Marshmallow. If you don't know who that is, it's the dude that literally wears a marshmallow on his head. Demonic backdrops are one thing. I get it at raves. People want to have the new crazy visuals with their music. But this man takes it to to a whole nother level he wears these antler heads he's levitating in the middle of his raves not only that he's literally throwing heads into the crowd imagine you see all of this and you're listening to his songs called demonic curse modern sorcery mind control purgatory come on this is no rave this is a satanic ritual and i thought steve aoki throwing a cake in the crowd was bad oh i got y'all going right here you see that person right there Take a good look at these again, one more time, look at them close. If you ever done any kind of construction, you know what core drilling is and you know how much it sucks. Look how the little cores come out, look right there, look at that one. Look up here, you see that? Look what I'm saying, look at like this one right here, look like it wasn't even finished, man. Like they, didn't, they couldn't get all the way down in there, man. That, those core drills, those big, those things are no fun. While we're on the topic of giants, look at this little typical mountain. Notice the patterns on it, okay? Structure of an epidermis, which is your skin, actually. Look right there. I mean, that is so, so neat, you know, but that's, that's just skin and that's just a mountain. No big deal. A couple more, these look, you know, these could be something else. Pretty neat looking little rock right there, for sure. Even got the eyelashes. <laughs> so the question is, my friends, what in the core drilled these four things and why didn't that dude finish that one right there, man? Whether or not there were giants, I don't know how any ancient civilization would even go about carving out perfect cylindrical blocks from stone like that. We could probably safely rule out hammer and chisel though. This is the big story no one knows. Those weren't extraterrestrial, those are ours. Those are coming out of the Lockheed Skunk Works and Northrop and EG&G &G and Raytheon. I know where they're made. I know who's worked on them. That's an alternative energy device. It, that is not consuming anything you're burning. If you were to put something that was stationary, in other words, sitting at your house or in your car, that was pulling that kind of energy out of what's called the zero point field of energy, you'd have no power bill, there'd be no pollution, and within 20 years, all poverty on Earth would be over. If you have a handful of global super powerful interests that are controlling a thousand trillion dollars worth of assets, fossil fuels, nuclear, internal combustion engine, car engines, jets, rockets, all the oil, gas, coal in the ground, all the commodities trading based on that, it's well over a quadrillion dollars. Whether it's 2023 or 1953, those interests, which actually have more power than we, the people, the Congress and the presidency and what have you, they're the ones calling the shots on it, so I assure you. I feel like if they do have this type of technology, they'll only release it once they figure out how to monetize it. I don't know, man, but how long do you think they can keep insulting our intelligence before we've had enough? I mean... They're teaching us at very young ages that these things are mountains. They call them mesas, flat top, tabletop mountains. It's just how they are. They teach us to go against what our own eyes see. What we believe deep down, we second guess it, and we go with the status quo. Come on. I think it's about time we trust our eyes, we wake up, realize that things aren't what they seem. Why would they lie about something like this? Well, if you knew about the giant trees, that they were cut down, you would have to know about the Nephilim know about the Nephilim, you have to know about the Book of Enoch. To know about the Book of Enoch would mean you would know that they took some stories out of the Bible. And if you realize that, then you realize that everything you've ever been told is a lie. It's eye-opening looking at the Devil's Tower from that perspective because there is no other topography around it that looks even remotely similar. One of the biggest mysteries of recent decades is this small artifact called the Black Pyramid. The pyramid-shaped stone is just 25 centimeters high 
and was found along with other artifacts in La Mana, Ecuador, in 1984. Investigators realized that it glows under ultraviolet light and has an unusual eye carved in the top. The eye doesn't seem to be human, but more reptilian. But the strangest thing is carved on the bottom, a representation of the stars in Orion's belt with some writing. This writing is very ancient and known as pre-Sanskrit, and the translation is Sutamati Kara as the son of the creator comes from here. Maybe it's some sort of old ancient reptilian rune stone, bro. I'm surprised the Vatican hasn't came and scooped it up yet. What is that? That's a Lamborghini panel wagon. Sapphire blue. Lamborghini, boy, you can, man, look how big the thing is, man. You fit two, three and then throw a deer in the back. The right turn radius is probably worse than a semi truck, but the soccer mom is definitely approved. But with that being said, guys, that was the video. Thank you for coming to kick it with me. Let me know what you guys thought about these creepy TikToks in the comments below. And until next time, y'all take care of yourself.